very much. I now call on Sarah Boyer, eight minutes. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Well, Labour wanted to bring this debate to Parliament because we think the current situation is totally unsatisfactory. And the Scottish Government's position on waste management facilities lacks clarity. Up across the country, people are up in arms at the plethora of large-scale incinerators, and they expect the planning system to, at the very least, hear and listen to their concerns about health and transport impacts. But there is a strong feeling that the Scottish Government is not listening. And that frustration is reinforced by the fact that SNP ministers and candidates across the country campaigned against these proposals at the election, but have been silent since. And the truth is that the SNP put in place a system no, thank you. I'm not even into my first minute. They put in place a system of decision-making that is less transparent and tilts the balance of power to the centre. So local authorities don't have certainty, developers don't have certainty, and local communities don't have certainty, and that's totally unacceptable. And what's more disappointing is that we've been here before. In 2007, SNP candidates, now ministers, campaigned against the Bewley Denny line, yet when they were elected to government, their government green-lighted the line. So it's not about your right to disagree with the government, it's about consistency. And on waste management, the SNP government have presided over the changes that have led us to this unsatisfactory position that communities and and businesses across the country now find themselves in. Now, there is total support across this chamber today, and I welcome that, for the government's Zero Waste Scotland ambitions. The Minister should take heart in that. And we also support the principles that underpin, underpin that in the waste hierarchy. Reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. Our concern across the chamber, and members in every party have expressed concerns, is that the strategy is not being implemented at the moment. Now, the SNP put in place ambitious targets to deliver on their strategy. Again, there was support across this chamber. But the Audit Scotland comments was not simply uh, that every single local authority uh, was not going to meet their targets. It was about collectively council plans not being in place. And that is the problem here. Why are council plans not in place? In the Lothians, for example, there was joint planning between the authorities, and one of the first acts of the Minister in the last Parliament was to dismantle the regional strategy that would enable them to put those facilities in place. The regional strategy was dumped at the time we warned of the consequences. By taking away a coordinated approach, you left the private sector to fill that vacuum. That's why we have the problem today. The new guidelines introduced by the Cabinet Secretary in the last Parliament introduced the proximity principle. Again, we asked, what does that mean in practice? It sounded good, local facilities planned locally, but we questioned how it would work in practice. It didn't give clarity to local authorities who have to set out development plans to provide the certainty for infrastructure investment. That's what the planning system is about, and crucially, democratic accountability so that local people can see the plans for their area. I'd love to take an intervention. Campbell. Just to make clear that the Scottish planning policy and the Zero Waste Plan do provide a framework there for waste uh, treatment, and also there is forthcoming planning advice that's to be peer-reviewed and will be going out to uh, consultation later on this year. Well, as Elaine Smith pointed out, the problem is that the government is changing the rules in the middle of the decisions that are being taken now. And as she pointed out, the proximity principle was unceremoniously dumped earlier this year in the middle of a public inquiry. That cannot be right. Not only that, but the Scottish Government have quietly removed planning rights that were absolutely crucial and planning requirements to local authorities on notification. Now, the SNP members supported the Planning Act in 2006. It went through with their support, but quietly, the Scottish Government took away the requirement of local authorities to report to the Scottish Government when they've breached their local plans, and the only issues left where category, or categories where there must be notification now is developments where the local planning authorities have an interest themselves, objections by government agency, and open cast coal and related minerals applications. There is now no trigger notification on neighbouring local authorities or development plan breaches, and that is part of the problem here in waste management. This is a centralising government. Having dumped the regional planning framework for race management, having dumped the proximity principle, the Scottish Government have removed the capacity for local authorities to make waste management proposal decisions themselves. Nobody wins 
Nobody wins, Minister, because local authorities know that even if they refuse planning applications, they can be approved by Scottish ministers. And that has happened on waste management proposals. That happened in two major schemes. Community campaigners know that in the end, it's up to the Scottish ministers to make these decisions. And there are no upfront safeguards because this government has been undermining them. The point I would make to Mark Macdonald, who I thought made an excellent speech, is that where local authorities have made those decisions about cumulative impact, that is not being taken on board. I thought there were also points made um, by a number of SNP uh, backbenchers about cumulative impact and the impact in recycling programmes. It's clear, it's clear Cabinet Secretary, large-scale incinerators aren't an incentive to drive up recycling rates as it's cheaper in the long term to burn rubbish rather than separate it out and find markets to reuse or cycle the materials. And the Minister, you acknowledged that in your own speech. Planning decisions are not, though, being made on those needs, and they're not taking into account the issue of cumulative impact. The environmental costs need to be factored in. Large-scale projects mean large number of lorries travelling long distances, and environmental justice has to be part of the picture. I was really disappointed the Minister didn't refer to the points we make about wood, biomass and waste energy. Projects cannot be sustainable if there isn't the availability of wood and it has to be imported. CONFOR and the RSPB have flagged up their concerns about the major expansion of large-scale biomass to energy projects. They highlight the fact that we've already got a limited supply of wood and that the problem with major and significant sized projects is that they will damage UK jobs and have a counterproductive impact on our carbon emissions. That needs to be factored in, Minister. I was disappointed you didn't specifically address that point in our amendment and just want to take it out completely. The RSPB have also raised concerns about the impact on forests, not just in this country and how we use our wood, but the habitats of exporting countries and the impact on rainforests. So there is a wider responsibility here that is not being addressed, and I was disappointed to hear those issues not even getting a name check in the Cabinet Secretary's speech. At the local level, local authorities are left without clear guidance, and developers aren't being given clarity either. They spend thousands of pounds of money on these planning inquiries and putting proposals forward, and by not taking up the issue of need, by not addressing the issue of cumulative impact, and by not giving clear guidelines, it's not for anybody's interest. And across the debate, there are debates. Across the country, there are debates, and I'm not going to mention any of them. You just need to mention Lanarkshire, Renfrewshire, the Lothians. We know in all those places, SNP candidates were clear about their views before the election, but their own government, no, I'm not attacking you, their own government has actually removed, has actually removed the guidance that would actually help those decisions be made properly. People can see through that. A zero waste, no, no, thank you, I'm in my last 30 seconds. I, you had time. two speeches, Minister. You didn't even have the courtesy. You didn't even have the courtesy to raise the issues in our amendment. You've merely gone for a delete all and insert amendment. That isn't good enough. Stand up, stand up for your own principles. Actually debate the issues in our motion. You've ignored the issues in our motion this morning. You haven't had the courtesy to address them. I'm disappointed you've gutted our motion today. Nobody disputes the need for a zero waste strategy in Scotland. The problem is you're not delivering that. It's on your watch, it's your strategy, and you've played around with the rules, and that's why it won't succeed.